Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel, aka Hashlips, and today, right here in front of me, I've got a tool that potentially could help a lot of developers out there when it comes to sizing their tasks that they need to do. For example, adding how much effort it's going to take to complete a given development task. Before we carry on, it's important to know where this all fits in, and this fits into the agile software development process. So usually when applications get developed, there are certain ways that teams can follow uh, methodologies that they can use to develop the software. Agile being a very modern way of approaching software development where pieces of work gets done uh, that speaks to the completion of the entire application via sprints. And each sprint consists of two weeks. But now how do we determine how much work we're going to do within each sprint within those two weeks. Now, it's a much bigger process to work out the capacity and the velocity and to determine how many story points they're gonna take in to those two weeks of development. But what are story points? Well, story points are assigned to a certain feature that needs to be developed to determine the effort that is involved. It is not necessarily how long it's gonna take, but instead the complexity, the effort, everyone coming together to complete that task, what is that story point? And how can we measure that in a number value? So let's just take an example of someone wanting to develop a one-pager application. So there's our application, it's a one-pager, we've got some header, uh, we've got a body of content, and maybe we even have some image showing a profile of a user, okay? Uh, excuse the drawing, but essentially we need to show the user and their name. So this is a profile application. And so what usually will happen is that requirements will be drawn up for how this should work. And then this would go into design. Once it's done and approved, then developers need to take this and develop it. So what they will identify or what would be identified uh, in the requirements would be this feature of a profile image showing on the page. And this could be seen as a component, whichever um, technology they use. So a developer and with the whole developing team, it uh, depends on how they do that, would take this feature and say, well, in order to build out this component with the picture showing and the name, what is gonna be required? Well, we need to develop the UI, do some styling, and then potentially call an API to get the data to show the image. So for a developer, they might see this as a, a bit more of a complex component. It's not very simple. They need to do some validation checking and call an external data source. So someone might say this is a three story point to develop this feature. Now, where does three come from? Because it's very subjective, right? And it's exactly that, it's very subjective. It's up to the developing team to decide how much effort is involved to get to this three story point. Some teams work with the Fibonacci sequence. Um, so what they would size stories as, or features as uh, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, and so on. So this being a three, what does it mean for a feature to be a two or a one? And so that's usually how teams determine what is a three, what is a five, an eight, a one, so forth. So taking that into consideration, um, teams could potentially say that if there were to be a button on the screen and we had to develop purely this button and it has no API call involved, it's just a button, this could be a story point of one. A story point of two that could potentially be maybe the component that just shows a body of work because simply it doesn't have that extra complexity of using the API that this component does. And so teams will go through all the features and try and assign story points to the effort that's involved to complete these features. So there might be another feature here and another one here. This one might have a, a 13. 
Uh, if a story point gets this big, sometimes it's better to split it up, whatever the case might be. And maybe this one is a five. So now it's usually time for the team to decide how many of these features are they going to take into the two weeks sprint that they need to complete. And so how they work it out is via their velocity. Velocity is worked out by history, by the previous sprints, how many story points the teams could get through in that given two week period. And so let's say, let's assume that a team of two uh, managed to get through 16 story points, um, just as an example. So for this sprint, it would be safe to say that they can take in this profile feature, the button, uh, this one could go in, and maybe even uh, this feature as well. And if we calculate the story points, it comes to uh, 11. So it's safe to say that for this sprint, we should be able, based on our past experience, complete all of these features in the sprint. Uh, we could not take in this big one because we would go over the velocity that we can actually take in. Okay, It's just that is how Agile works. I know very um, complex at first to just wrap your head around it, but just hear me out. Sometimes this works very well and sometimes it just doesn't. And the reason for that is sometimes we might say that 11 story points gets pulled in because previously 16 was achieved. However, um, if this is the case, there needs to be a collaborative understanding of what it means to size these tasks within the team. And even for yourself, because when you assign a three to a given feature, you need to know um, all the dependency, all the unknowns, and everything that's going to be involved to get this done so that you can confidently say, this is the effort that's going to be involved to complete this fully. If you miss something or you didn't think of a dependency or a design wasn't ready, this might impact the story point leading to an overlap of features or uh, uh, features not getting completed in that sprint. And therefore, it, the, the whole process just doesn't make sense. The whole process um, struggles and you find that features constantly just flows over into the next development cycle. So is there an easy fix for this? I do not know, and you can let me know in the comments if I explain this even um, relatively okay, because I'm not a scrum uh, expert when it comes to how all these things function. But what I do know is how to size features based on the effort. So taking that into consideration, I decided over the weekend to develop a tool for myself at first so that I can size my projects, the features that I need to build in my projects uh, easier and to kind of identify the effort on a, a template based way. And this tool is by no means in production ready, um, although it is open to you guys to use and critique and let me know which sizes we need to change as well as which features we need to add to make this a tool that you can use as well. So feel free to let me know in the comments what changes I can make and I'll do them. Right, so now that we understand that this tool is purely experimental and we are going to get it wrong at first, but I think there is some validity to this. So let me show you how it works. Let's take, for example, we need to resize this feature over here, which previously was a three, uh, which I feel is a fair size, uh, but any case, here we go, we need to develop this. We can head over to deveffort.io forward slash estimation, or you can simply click uh, on the navigation tab. So the first thing we need to do is we can now start clicking on things that we need to add for this feature. For example, um, we do not need to do any backend development, so we can skip this section. But for the front end development, we can now go ahead and see. Do we need to have a small UI component? Well, this is not like a button or something. It's a bit more complex. 
So I'm going to select this option. And I know that there are some API integration involved. And so I will definitely need to select this one. It's not a complex integration, it's just pulling in the image. And so when I have selected the work that I need to do, there's no animation effects. This is not a full page. Um, for example, I do not need any unit tests. Maybe I do, depends on what you need to do. You can select some of that. There's no cloud infrastructure and dependency wise, that is fine. So if I go down, I get to the selected task sections, which I can also remove things that I've selected here. But in essence, I get a story point of four. Now, this is a bit higher than the one we've done here, um, but this is subjective as well. Like I said, these things are gonna change. And if you wanna use the Fibonacci um, mechanism, then you can just convert this down to a three uh, or to a five, whatever you feel is better uh, suited for this feature that you need to develop. But regardless, if you have your size, you can assign it to your ticket and then reset the score and start again with the next one. Maybe you need to do a small backend update and that's gonna have some database work. And on top of that, there's also some API documentation that you need to do. And so with the update, or let's rather say uh, API development instead of update. So you're basically creating an endpoint you can see that there's a story point of seven. Potentially that could be eight, right? And you can then go ahead, write this down and reset it again and start all over. So the help that I need from the community side is to select some of these items and see if the story point makes sense for the item itself. If it doesn't, please let me know exactly uh, which one I can alter or adjust from your experience. This will help me a great deal because I can then see and refine this tool for everyone that's going to use it in the future. Like I said, it's also in development, so it doesn't have a lot of features and tasks to select. It is just for me to test if this is going to work and it can even get more complex so that when we select, we have extra options to add to this sizing as well. The goal here for me and, and what I envisioned was that although sizing is subjective, there is still some guidelines that's being followed when sizing happens. You need to consider everything that is involved. When we decided that we have our complex component and a simple API integration and it was a four, that is good. But what if there was a dependency and some of the design um, specs were unclear. We could select an option like that and then see the size is heavily increased. And thus we can decide to first sort out the design dependency before we even go ahead and do this task. Of course, this is a challenging task to see if a tool like this would be viable, seeing that teams are different, applications that they are building are different, there's different environments, Developers develop on different speeds and have different views on certain uh, sizings as well. The goal is to come up with a generic size uh, for basic tasks so that if you are a solo developer or developing in a team, you need a tool to quickly estimate the tasks at hand that this might come of use and can help you in your development journey. We always try and make development fun and easy for ourselves and I thought this would be a cool little project to start and just work on on the side so that I can see how we can develop and help improve sizing when it comes to running the agile methodology and building those awesome apps. Uh, anyways, like always, I do hope that you enjoyed my video today. Uh, please let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And then till next time, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.